So I myself, Kyle Biri, um, a PhD scholar, this Mumbai, and I am coordinating AIWSSF. Uh, today we gonna see this session on introduction and the general guide to clear UGC and JRF net exam. I'm sharing my PPT now. Is it visible for you all? Yes. Thank you. So these are the contents today we are gonna see in this coaching session. It's like what and why this exam and how to apply, when to apply, whom can apply for this exam and how to prepare for exam syllabus, uh, both general paper and women's studies paper. Uh, particularly, I am taking now the women's studies. And how to attend CBT, a uh, computer-based test and general guide, overall guide. And uh, we are sharing the links and references uh, in the last slide. So about this uh, UGC net JRF exam. Uh, UGC conducts national eligibility test for teaching higher education and it's for selecting the assistant professors and uh, JRF junior research fellowship and it will be conducted twice per year in the month of June and December national testing agency is conducting this CBT exam uh, CBT exam was conducted uh, from December, 20, uh, December 2018 onwards. So uh, basically this exam is for uh, teaching in higher educations like uh, college and university level. So typically for assistant professors. NET exam is for assistant professors and JRF, JRF is for, uh, it's the fellowship for the research scholars, okay. So uh, for now, we have uh, how, how we can apply. We can apply it through the uh, uh, UGC uh, website or NTA website. And we have shared this link here. And yeah, yeah, we have the timeline like uh, from August 10th itself, we, uh, we, we can apply for it. And uh, till September 5, we have the uh, we have the time and this time they have conducting for both the uh, December 2020 and this June 2021's exam. So both were merged. So due to the COVID pandemic, they were conducting both the exams. Uh, those were uh, postponed uh, and they were conducting it now. Okay, you have a time till September 5 to apply for the exams. So people who haven't applied yet, you can apply. So eligibility uh, to attend this exam is like uh, a PG degree and the PG final year students can also apply and uh, do this exam. And a uh, basic percentage like for general category, uh, they were asking 55% and for OBC is uh, ST, SC and uh, PWD and for women it was just asked the 50 percentage. And age limit for a uh, net assistant professor, no age limit is uh, given. And for JRF, it was said uh, 30 years, but now they have relaxed it to uh, 21 years, uh, five years for OBC, SCST, and the PWD and the women's. And we are going now to uh, how to prefer for uh, prepare for exam syllabuses. Do you, uh, have any doubts regarding the the questions we have so far covered now any doubts or any questions you have we can see that and we can go to the other another uh, unit no doubt okay thank you okay uh, we are gonna see how to prepare for the exam syllabus so these are the two um, papers number one is a uh, general paper it is very common for all the UGC net uh, JRF exam and 
Paper two will be for the discipline, uh, the chosen discipline or the field we uh, selected. Uh, now we are uh, discussing about the women's studies paper for second paper and the, the common general paper we are seeing. So in the common general uh, paper, we have teaching aptitude, research aptitude, comprehension, communication, mathematical reasoning and aptitude, uh, logical reasoning, data interpretation, information communication technology ICT and people development and the environment higher education system so these are the 10 chapters we see in paper one this is for general paper and for this exam we have one hour and 50 questions will be asked uh, all the questions will be in objective types and for 50 questions we can uh, we'll, we'll get 100 marks so uh, one question will be having two marks two marks and in the third, uh, second paper, uh, Introduction to Women's Studies, Feminist Thinkers and Theories, Gender and Education, Women, Work and Employment, Gender and Entrepreneurship, Women and Health, Women, Empowerment and Development, Women, Law and Governance, Gender and Media, Feminist Research Methodology. So these are the 10 chapters. Uh, it was in the paper two, Women's Studies paper. So for this, we have two hearts. And 10, 100 questions will be asked. For 100 questions, 200 marks will be provided. So uh, per question, it will be two marks. So totally, we have three hard, three hard for exam and 150 questions and 300 marks we have to score. It's not something we have to score 300 marks. It has uh, its own percentage. Yeah, and in the second paper, uh, today uh, it won't, uh, it was like, um, typically like we enter into the tuition center like that, you may be feeling, because we are, uh, this is a coaching class, okay, not any kind of lecture. So in this first paper, uh, I'm just uh, giving you the idea how to uh, divide the units or how to divide the chapters and prepare for the exam it's like uh, uh, uh for i have just uh, separated is it like a theory and practical part we are uh, discussing now about the pa uh, paper one only so in this uh in this theory part uh what i meant it's like we have to understand the whole uh whole paper or the whole syllabus and memorize the content so understanding and memorizing so that's what i mentioned here as a theory part so uh yeah to that category uh teaching aptitude research aptitude communication data interpretation information communication technology people development and environment higher education system so all the things which we given in the red uh, mark will be separated as a theory part so for this you have to understand the concepts to you have to understand and you have to memorize important things so that's what we mentioned here has theory part so and another one is practical thing so you have to practice you have to uh, practice these units then only you can able to and uh, able to uh, score more in this uh, and also this chapter, it's like a practicing thing. It's like comprehension. It will be like uh, something you have to practice, work out like that. So in, here we have the fifth chapter, mathematical reasoning and aptitude and logical reasoning. And also this seventh chapter goes with both practical and theory because you have to memorize the um, formulas and the other important concepts that we uh, go to this data interpretation and also you have to practice uh, solving the sums which we have in the chapter so you can separate it uh, like theory and practice paper and you can prepare for your exam so this will be uh, this will be easy for you to prepare for this paper one and again when we uh, come to the paper one we uh, we as a arts MA students or art students not coming from the uh, math or science background we have some difficulty because after the schooling we won't be uh, we won't uh, get it uh, studying this mathematical and uh, 
other uh, mathem mathematic oriented uh, syllabus so we we find it quite difficult for that you we have to uh, take extra classes or we have to go to the peers who know the uh, unit or you who know the topic very well so that thing we can do for that and other theory parts uh, mo overall it was like uh, except four chapters most of the paper are uh, theory part so you can uh, you can uh, do well in this paper so yeah this is why we just uh, separated it and explaining this to you all yeah when we come to the paper 2 already we have seen uh, these are the chapters in paper 2 introduction to women's studies feminist thinker theories gender education gender law gender and media feminist research methodology and so on so for this 10 chapters how the questions will be asked so i have just uh, separated i have just uh, divided it like so what kind of what type of questions they do ask in paper 2 so these are the these are the types they do ask it's like they do ask questions uh, from timelines timeline means the historical events uh, we have we have to uh, memorize the years we have to memorize the di digits like that we have to memorize the personal per person's name like that so here i have given this a timeline example one like matching the world conferences and year and objective so people who are doing women's studies or gender studies they will be very very well versed of this uh, women's studies histories and uh, chapter one are uh, the, uh, the other chapters we are speaking now so in this timeline they do ask a uh, timeline it's like number one it could be like matching the matching the option it's like for nairobi conference they were giving the year 1980 but the answer is 1985 and for beijing conference it's 1995 compahan conference it's 1980 beijing 10 beijing plus 10 conference it will be 2005 so answer could be like um a four three one two and again for this answer there will be a b c d while while doing this you will be more uh, aware so by the mistake also you can uh, choose only this this number one you you might be uh, selecting that and just leaving so you should be very careful while selecting the options even though you know the answer there uh, there are uh, slightly you will uh, distracted and you will go to some other wrong answers so be careful while selecting your answers so example two in the timeline book and year here i just give it, giving you the only one or two more examples because we have to complete all other question types so here i have just mentioned a feminine mystic which is written by uh betty Friedan in the year 1963 they will just uh, ju they will just ask you uh the, they will just give the book name and year and uh, we have to uh, match it and we have to give them the uh, give them the answers so that's how the questions will be asked and example three they will uh, ask questions from policy plan and schemes law and year again so here i have given three uh, examples like uh, second uh, national education policy which was introduced in 1986 and towards equality report uh, or committee on the status of women in india they do interchangeably also ask the question sometimes they will ask just towards equality report or sometimes they will ask committee on the status of women in india both are same but we have to be clear with the, uh, what is what and it was uh, it was on 1974 they have in, uh, given the report towards equal towards equality report. and third one rashtriya kishore uh, swasthya karyakram scheme so it was introduced in 2014 and it's for uh, adolescent sexual health and also you have to keep in mind which scheme is for uh, which category of people or for which population you have to be careful and they will also ask question from question like this and example three 
they will ask question from uh, historical events and years like uh, it can be a objective uh, option uh, ob objective type question or it can be match the following they will ask like uh, first wave feminist movement uh, it was uh, it was in the early 20th century second wave feminist movement it will be like 1960s to 1980 it happened and third wave feminist movement 1990s to 2000s or it was quite different from all across the country yeah next type of question they do ask like books books famous sayings uh, it can be quote uh, they took it from some classical books and the authors who said it example uh, i have given two things like master following second six who returned second six anybody would like to answer silent debate very good yeah the second stage any other person okay the answer was also in the screen so you people can answer it yeah so second sex uh, simon de bouvier this second stage betty friedan uh, she wrote it after the feminine mystic uh, then the biology is destiny is by freud and black feminist thought it's by uh, patricia hill collins and also not only just the book author and also they will ask you to uh, mention the year so uh, be clear with the year also and example 2 who is the feminist who quoted personal is political anybody would like to answer please yeah carol hansen so she is the person who said personal is political okay i will ask you question uh, which haven't in this uh, slide so who is the person uh, who mentioned women's problem women's household household problem as a problems which has no name who's who is the fem famous saying and authors so i guess for example we have first for example we covered and second example also we covered and uh, this question like a uh, first women in history or first historical things happen in uh, women studies like that they do ask questions i just given the historical thing like a uh, first women chief minister of uttar pradesh so who is that suchita kripalani and in the year 1963 to 1967 she is the first uh, chief minister women chief minister and for prime minister we have indira gandhi and uh, first uh, women study center sndt like that they do ask and also please be clear with the year they have uh, established the institutions and this kind of question like jargons and abbreviations jargon means are the technical terms or very specific terms which we which we use in the discipline or in specific field so these are the terms uh, we use uh, in women studies like glass ceiling male gaze patriarchy matriarchy matrilineal so these are the terms we do use right in women studies and we have to be clear with the jargons the terminologies and what does it mean like that and also uh, they do ask who is who find the term like that they do ask and in what work or in what uh, uh, in what year they do coin that will also they ask the term uh, feminist it was firstly used by olympia de golgis i guess i pronounce it uh, in a manner in the year 1787 uh, in france uh, while she is uh, writing up something for addressing the state and that time only she coined the term feminist so these kind of uh, jargons these kind of terminology in uh, feminist research methodology uh, research methodology also there are a uh, lots of terminologies we have to learn and we have to be clear with the meanings and also the year and the person who coined that Uh, terms and again in this uh, question type also we have to uh, 
see the abbreviations abbreviations means uh, the short form or uh, if we say who it means world health organization for women's studies or uh, there are uh, lots of ministries or uh, uh, schemes which we uh, term in the abbreviation format so be clear with the terms and uh, they will uh, we have to be clear with the terms then only we can able to answer the question and again uh, the question type like statistical data and reports so these reports will be uh, published in uh, yearly or some reports will be published in a uh, decade for a decade they do publish like population data and all so we have to be updated with these kind of data and reports which published by governments so i am just giving the example of uh, sex ratio and it year it's like uh, in 1951 it was 946 sex ratio 1971, 930, 1991, 9, 927. In 2011, it was 943. So these are the trends of uh, sex ratio. Uh, and this, uh, if we see, look at it, it's like, it's a dec uh, it was taken in decades, like 50, 71, 91, 2011 then they will take it in the next 10 year it's like 2021 or 2021 like that uh, 22 like that they do take so it was uh, taking a uh, decadely they, they they do take the reports and another report we have to uh, uh, importantly look at it's like global uh, gender gap report so everywhere uh, every year they do publish this report it's by uh, world bank and you have to be clear with that report also because uh, recent years there are lots of questions uh compulsory questions they do ask from that report also so uh, you can uh, refer to these kind of reports these kind of data we have and be clear with the data which is related to women gender and the child uh, to our discipline particularly and another kind of question, it's like current affairs. Uh, it can be news or the updates mm -hmm. from our discipline. Anybody speaking? Mm -hmm. So these are like, uh, we have, so please uh, unmute your, uh, mute yourself. Uh, Leisha Chaudhary, I guess. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, in this uh, current of years or uh, in this in this question, they do ask question from uh, recently happened things. Uh, it can be from sports. Uh, if uh, some women or trans first chance transgender people is coming uh, winning in something or uh, they taking some position, they do uh, question. Uh, they do ask questions about this. And again, if there is any changes in the law or in the policy, they do. Uh, they do ask question about that and uh, again policy or any other updates which which from our discipline they do ask question on that so please be updated by reading the news or reading the recently uh, recently published articles or books we have to be uh, uh, we have to be updated with these kind of uh, news items then then the question type establishments and the personality and year. So, uh, so it's like uh, who established which, which thing and the name of the establishment and the year they ask and the per person's name they ask. I'm just giving the uh, two examples. Um, Sarocha, uh, Saroj Nalini Dutt, founder of Mahila Samiti during the British time. And again, for the second question, I have just given you the example. Urushi Butalia, she, is, she founded a, a feminist pu publishing house, which name is Kali for Women, and it was uh, established in 1984. So, so these kind of things, these kind of uh, establishment, which, uh, which was uh, done by a feminist or women leaders, or which is for women and uh, gender equality, we have to uh, have eye on this and we have to read this in manner. And again, the question type assertion and reasoning. Uh, 
sometimes we do um we are clear but sometimes we do mistake on this this type of question also it's like assertion and reasoning so i just given it given the only one example here if you if you want i can uh, explain on it more like uh, here the example assertion feminine and masculine qualities or in born and natural so what they were telling feminine and masculine traits which are born in general it's like uh, attaching the sex to a person's characteristics and that too in the binarical way so that's what here the assertion is and uh, here they were giving the reason no men no men or gentle and caring yeah no men or gentle and caring they were uh, yeah no men are gentle and caring they uh, they they giving some reason and uh, to the assertion and reason there is no connection so we have to just uh, be clear that whether the reasoning is true or false and uh, the assertion is true or false so anybody guess uh, here the given assertion is true or false yeah please somebody guess that assertion here they given is true or false and also reasoning here they given is true or false one by one two members please do answer yeah anybody can unmute yourself and answer feminine and masculine qualities yeah uh, it wasn't clear d d B. 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 It's okay. B. Sorry, B. Uh, yes, I think it's B. Yeah, the answer is B actually. Feminine and masculine. No, feminine and masculine qualities are inborn and natural. But it was wrong, right? Maybe, maybe the question itself is wrong. We'll look at some other examples. And here I want to uh, explain few other things uh, from this question type. It's like sometimes they do uh, combinedly ask whether the assertion and reasoning is uh, somehow related or not. They do ask and uh, they do give some uh, wrong assumption it's like no men are gentle and caring we can say that it's not true like not all the men are safe and not the not all the men are uh, uh, we can't say like we can't generalize things so here the reason is wrong that i am sure but the assertion i i, I have some uh, i have some uh, doubts and also sometimes they do uh, confuse uh, they do question like this in the confusing manner so here here they have uh, answered like b is the answer and uh, another question type comprehension so they will give a paragraph one or two paragraph or, or more than 20 line they do give and they will question they they will give a question from the uh, given paragraph so uh, in that paragraph whatever they say we have to answer in that particular context whatever they say we have to answer that not something uh, which is right or wrong from our view view for uh, our point of view we have to answer what is given in that paragraph so uh, be clear with this sometimes we'll just like uh, yeah even in uh, in the statement they were telling like feminine and masculine qualities are uh, in born and natural but uh, femininity uh, and masculine quality is not uh, that is quite uh, construct right Co construct sometimes uh, we'll give some uh, wrong wrong answers by considering our point of view so we have to carefully read out the paragraph and give the answer uh, some people will uh, 
thoroughly read out the paragraph and uh, give the answer some people will just read out the questions and go to the paragraph and find the answer and they will give so whatever uh, the method you follow uh, you can uh, carry on with that and before that uh, this questions need to be practiced eventually so uh, with the pra practice and with the knowledge of in uh, it, i won't say uh, no uh, english is a knowledge but you have to practice so you can uh, well versed with reading books or uh, reading some text you can uh, and also getting a uh, building your vocabulary you can uh, be very rightful in this uh, type of questions and fourth uh, unit we have to see like uh, how to attend computer based test so uh, i just took it from the uh, mock uh, mock test uh, yeah you nta mock test uh, this is how uh, we have to answer this uh, question it this is a general instruction they give like so who is whose volume is uh, whose noise is that please unmute please mute priya darshini please mute that person okay thank you yeah in this uh, in this slide we seeing that how to attend computer based test so uh, i would like to hear from you all uh, at least any two or uh, yeah anybody who haven't attended uh, computer based test so far who never attended the test so far anybody is here who never attended the test so for computer based test or everybody have the experience okay um, i guess everybody has uh, the experience that you people have attended the exam so this is how uh, the questions uh, there will be a question and they, they will give uh, these kind of options like uh we can uh we can get the idea whether we attended the question or not uh by looking at this codes like uh, number 1 it's like you have not visited the question yet so you haven't visited the question yet in the paper and again a second one in the orange color you have not answered the question and the three in the green color you have answered the question so uh if you have attended the question and not answered there will be uh, the mark of orange color it 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 says that you 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 have not answered the question so uh, by reading this uh, code we can get to know that we have answered it or not sometimes we just mistakenly skip the question and will go so you can check it uh, reading this so uh, and also i prefer uh, you all to uh, go and attend mock test before attending the exam so it uh, we also sharing the link uh, of uh, attending the mock test in nta so you can access that and you can attend the uh, exam and it will be for both papers like a general paper and also for women studies paper you can attend so if you people want we can uh, do it in the a uh, real time learning also if uh, if anybody want we can go to the site and we can attend few questions if you all okay with it if not then we can skip to the next slide anybody who want to do that or we just skip so yeah i will i will do that for once I have already opened it in my Chrome, so I will share with it. So I just uh, typed UGC mock test, and there is this uh, NTA mock test link. So I am just clicking on it. <clears throat> so. 
so it takes us to the site <coughs> And it asks which exam we want to attend. I'm just clicking UGC net and to the paper. So here the option women studies we are starting one more test. I have already logged in to the website so uh, it straight away goes. So here the typical exam uh, exam page will be like it's like they will give the general instruction and we have to read it completely and we have to uh, tick here and then we have to proceed with clicking this and get this first question and also there will be our details like uh, candidates candidates name exam remaining time also that will be and also here we can click on the language selection for the site and also here this uh, codes like uh, what we uh, see uh, latestly like the answer that whether we answered that question or not it will be appearing here and also all the question numbers so it will appear here and uh, up to 10 100 question it was appearing so we can straight away also go to uh, some questions which we like whatever number we like So we we'll just attend few questions. It's like I'm just go clicking on the first questions. So who among the following feminists referred women's studies as the academic arm of women's movement, a potential instrument playing a deliberate and active role in the battle for people's minds and autonomy uh, continues to be battle cry of both. So who said who said it so? Anybody would like to answer? Any guess? Veena Majumdar. Yeah, Veena Majumdar is the person who said that women's uh, Women's study, academic, uh, uh, the academic arm of women's movement is a women's studies as the academic arm of women's movement. So answer is three, and we have to save and next. Then only it will be became a uh, green color. So it says we answered the question. If you are not saving it and if we have some doubt and we just clicking it like a review review later like mark for review and next so it will become like that 
and save and mark for review it will and also we have to do that so again we coming to the powerpoint so just now we seen that uh, how to attend computer based test hope you all got it uh, how it how the exam will Uh, exam thing will happen how to answer and all is my screen visible to you all just my lap is hanging so please wait for a moment so next slide is like i just given the overall uh, preparation uh, guide or instruction it's like we have to maintain the routine it can be uh, what we do uh, after we wake up in the morning until we go to the bed so we can have some time table or schedule uh, to do our routine and to uh, to to do our academic one work and also to uh, complete the syllabus and prepare for the ugc net separately so you all can try that uh, scheduling it or making time table of what you all do and also staying healthy uh, uh, drinking enough water and taking care of uh, care of our health during the exams quite important and also there is no time limit or uh, there is no uh, limitation for preparing it's like a uh, within 2 month or within 3 month or within a week uh, we can prepare and we can clear, uh, clear the net or jr if it's not like that so uh, 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 yeah uh, from my experience i have never uh, prepared for ugc net uh, more than a week because it uh, there are some uh, it up to uh, it's my uh, it's my situation or uh, we can say like that because and eventually uh, something will happen i won't get time to prepare for the exam and i will just go and uh, and also i have cleared uh, net for uh, three times but i haven't gone for jrf maybe i haven't prepared for a longer period uh, that may be the case that i haven't cleared jrf and what is a uh, difference in clearing jrf and net so uh, yeah that also we we, we do uh, we do uh, discuss in the later uh, points so for uh, for now we have to uh, we are just uh, looking at the point one we have to maintain the routine and we have to uh, we have to uh, keep it up like we have to continue that and again second secondly i would like to say uh, 
knowing your strength and weakness uh, if you can keep it in your personal level or in the academic level or to the ugc uh, net preparation level so uh, when we uh, look at 20 chapters we know that a few point a few topics are very uh, very well knowing to to us like uh, we are well versed in that few topics but not in a few other topics we can point it out like uh, these are the uh, these are the topics I can able to give my full uh, potential and uh, we can uh, really uh, score more marks in that topics and the weakness we can uh, mention like these are the uh, topics which are quite uh, difficult and we have to learn more. So, okay, so you can point it that and uh, you can uh, uh, you can uh, work on your weakness, uh, work on your uh, uh, work on your topics which you don't know actually and you can practice on that. And also you can uh, learn about it uh, and give time uh, more to those topics which you are not well versed of. And third point, uh, work out pre previous year question papers. So uh, by working out the previous year question paper, at least five question paper you have to do. Uh, by that you will come to know what kind of questions they ask, in what perspective they ask. Yeah, all the uh, examples, all the question types which I have given, uh, discussed in this um, this session also it was from the uh, previous year question papers we uh, we looked at it and we divided it and given in this session so you all should practice a previous year question paper and also the ab objectives which which was uh, not right or which was uh, given to confuse us we have to make sure wh why they are relating it or what the objectives which uh, which was uh, except from the right answer so if they are given uh, giving you the four choices you have to also be sure with the other three choices and make sure uh, uh, you have knowledge on other three objectives which they give and fourth point i would like to uh, say like cover the syllabus you have to cover the syllabus as much as possible then only you can and able to get uh, more marks or uh, more score to uh, get the JR. And again, fifth one, uh, stay updated uh, in your field or discipline so that uh, get the current affairs, read newspaper or uh, be with your circle, be with your lecturers or uh, peer uh, academicians and stay updated. Then only you can able to uh, give the uh, answers to the current affairs questions. And the sixth point I would like to say, practice aptitude. Often we won't practice, but uh, that need time and that need uh, some extra time and that need that should be needed some practice. So uh, uh, yeah, allocate yourself time and practice the aptitude questions. And seventh one, memorize and understand the theoretical parts. So again, memorizing understanding and revising the theoretical part is also important be because sometimes we do forget some uh, some parts or because uh, we we won't be studying it for a longer period we do uh, uh, we do practically uh, um, forget the things right so you have to make sure that you 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 are just uh, revising it and understanding the theoretical part uh, during this exam time and again practice mock test you can uh, do it with the uh, hard copies of the question paper or in the mock uh, test website also you can go and do and again discuss with peer group so uh, study type uh, studying style will be different for one person to other person so uh, so uh, if you have any doubts or if you want some notes or uh, something else you needed you can go to your peer group and you can ask them and uh, get help immediately and tenth one i would like to say uh, for the theory part you should take notes then only uh, you can able to do things instead of keeping it in the phone or keeping it in a uh, laptop it won't help us uh, you have to take notes uh, uh, writing the note is very important these day we are just not writing anything and you should keep that habit of writing and taking notes and again, dividing questions accordingly, like what we seen in earlier, like personalities, timelines, awards, books, names, etc. And to the pra uh, next thing, like uh, practicing aptitude, uh, 
we have to work out the problems and uh, knowing the formulae and learning the uh, sums is also very important and to comprehension you can uh, improve yourself by reading newspapers english newspapers improving vocabulary and writing listening to uh, english news uh, or movies so on so by uh, by that you can improve your uh, english fluency and also you can able to understand things in well manner for the comprehension question so comprehension itself gives the idea that we have we should whether we understanding the given text or not that's what the whole idea behind this comprehension portion and um, and next thing like new jargons in our discipline so what is the new words coined in our discipline what is the new research we come out with so that thing we have we want to be uh, updated it can be done in the academic uh, discussion so we have to do that thing also and remember it's a competition yeah i have already uh, previously said like what is the difference between a clearing net and jr for clearing net uh, for clearing net uh, marks will be uh, we can clear net easily with low percentage but for jr we need to prepare more and again it's a competition we have to score more to uh, get jr so uh, so you have to uh, prepare more and you have to uh, do that to get jr and again uh, revising so by revising uh, by revision you will uh, you can you can uh, what to say uh, it will useful for the exam uh, to revise the uh, whole syllabus or notes you have uh, done in the pg level like that you should remember what you have already read so that's called uh, revising and uh, people who would like to go or uh, prefer to go for coaching class they can go and free online materials is available you can access that and uh, reaching out to peer uh, you can get their help in uh, studying the studying and preparing for ugc net that was also you can do and buying books uh, there are lots of uh, books not for women studies but for general paper it was available uh, harihan the oxford publish publication and uh, few other publication or giving the general paper uh, general paper one and uh, for uh, uh even for women studies there are uh, publications they providing us uh, some guides and also self preparation you can go with your own notes you can uh, you can go through the syllabus and create your own notes and uh, referring to the previous year question paper that you can do and the mock test you can take uh, in the computer based mode so these are the general guide uh, i used and these are the things which i done by myself and i'm just uh, preferring you to do and also you can follow your style and uh, these are the three links like um, this is for the ugc website and uh, one for nta and one for mock test so we just come to the end of this session and all the best for your exams and thank you for joining us today you can uh, now raise your questions or doubts or whatever you people have you can speak now unmute yourself and speak any doubts or questions hello hi mahira uh hi kayal actually i wanted to ask you a question like uh, when you said that uh, uh, reading about quotes of any feminist or any religion so they ask so randomly so how and it's a broad area to study so how can prepare for that, that quotes and uh, and a statement a particular statement from a book so how to prepare for that one thing and secondly you also said that uh, there is a number of feminist website from where we can access the uh, notes freely we can access the notes can you just name it and give link to us so that we can uh, have and uh, prepare for that and uh, firstly thank you so much for this amazing amazing session thank you thank you mahira both two questions are very important it's like uh, how we get uh, how we can read the whole uh, feminist classics or uh, cover the whole syllabus uh, 
within a one month because for now we have only one month time right so actually uh, this is like uh, we should have the reading habit once we start doing the higher education because uh, this uh, uh, jrf or net is net, net itself it's for teaching for higher education right so we have uh, we should uh, we should have the reading habit if we done good in the uh, uh, if we done good in the ug and pg covering the syllabus going through the feminist classical works so eventually we we will know that uh, what which person said what and which person uh, in which movement or uh, which feminist uh, way they they produced this book so all this very minute and uh, uh, essential information we are learning it or grasping it uh, from the pg level itself so it will come with the practice of reading continuing that habit and covering the syllabus um, so this is what it's something like searching in the sea and uh, this is not uh, and it's not uh, this so this is something unique in the higher education field like we have to uh, go through all the text and we have to well informed with the discipline what we doing so reading is very essential whether for uh, the exams point of view or uh, for us personally as a ma student or a research scholar like that so having the reading habit and uh, if we are done good in the pg covered the syllabus will eventually get to know we should have covered the feminist classical so it's easy for us to go so if not uh, if it's not so you can just uh, um, google it or you can now start uh, covering the syllabus uh, at least the famous popular uh, writers you can go and uh, get the summaries and what is the Uh, very uh, main aid idea they have given to the feminist uh, research or uh, feminist movement you can you can search for the quotes of uh, feminist scholars you can do that for instance and uh, links we will be sharing in the we will share you uh, in the whatsapp or uh, emails and also you can google uh, whatever you want uh, in the google or in the jstor on some epw articles you can get the materials actually so we will send you that link also anybody else any questions you have you can